Special counsel Jack Smith's team is pushing for a court order to limit what former President Trump and his attorneys can say publicly about some of the documents and evidence in the case. This was an expected step. It's a procedural one. But investigators could also have a reason to be worried about what he could potentially share. Look no further than the former president's Truth Social page today and what he posted. Bill Barr, a disgruntled former employee and very weak person and a very, very lazy attorney general, was totally ineffective. Let's discuss the legal and national security risk of Trump taking to social media with what he learns about this case. Here with me tonight, Jamil Jaffer, the founder and executive director of the National Security Institute at George Mason, as well as CNN legal and national security analyst, Kerry Cordero. Thank you both for being here. Jamil, I know that this is a procedural step. It's not exactly the surprise that Jack Smith's office is asking the judge to do this. But do they have a reason to be concerned that, that Trump could potentially share what they've learned, what they're sharing with their team? Well, you know, obviously there's a lot of witness testimony that's going to go into this case. There's a lot of uh, potential evidence. There's ongoing investigations of others involved. If any of that gets out, it could make those investigations harder to pursue. And, you know, Donald Trump has a penchant for getting out there and talking about anything and everything that comes to his mind. And so it's no surprise that they've asked for this protective order. The question now becomes, will the judge be able to enforce it if, in fact, it gets start being, starts being violated by Trump or any of the people around him? Yeah, and he speaks frequently about this. I mean, he speaks frequently about everything. He's basically going after Jack Smith nonstop. Why he made that video going after the people that he put in the top levels of government was because this is what they said about their view of how much legal trouble he could be in. If even half of it is true, then he's toast. I mean, it's a it's a pretty it's a very detailed indictment uh, and it's very, very damning. I suppose we can all make mistakes and get them to the wrong place. But when somebody identifies that, you got to turn them in. And so that's just that's inconsistent with protecting America's soldiers, sailors, airmen and Marines. And if the allegations are true, some of these were pretty serious, important documents. If he has anything like what the complaint, what the indictment alleges, and of course the government will have to prove it, uh, then, then he has committed very serious crimes. What do you make of that compared to, you know, for example, what we hear from Ronna McDaniel, who was saying, yeah, I want to wait and see what their defense is. I mean, these are his own people who worked for him who were saying, it's pretty damning if it's true. Well, these are all people who had national security responsibilities when they were in government, uh, including in the Trump administration. And every single one of them knows that if they saw a case like this come through the Justice Department when they were in government in senior leadership positions, they each absolutely would have supported the Justice Department going forward with a prosecution based on the nature of the documents that were mishandled, based on the obstructive conduct that took place. So they all know that. And so they they are uh, being honest in their assessment. And so they're asking Judge Cannon for this order. She has gotten a lot of scrutiny in the last several days, of course, of how she's going to handle this. What's your sense of how she'll do? Well, look, Judge Cannon, like every federal district judge, has an obligation to uphold the rule of law and apply the rule of law. Now, she had some rulings that people disagreed with when, in the, in the prior version of this case, when uh, the matter was before, went up to the 11th Circuit, was reversed, came back down, she implemented it. I think there's every reason to think that Judge Cannon uh, can handle this case perfectly effectively, uh, you know, in her position. Can I ask you about something before we go that Jim Trusty, one of Trump's attorneys who has now resigned from his legal team entirely, he withdrew from a lawsuit that the former president has against CNN, actually, citing irreconcilable differences, which stood out to a few people I spoke with today who said, you know, you wouldn't normally put a reason in a, case, in a civil case like that. All right. Well, I mean, he... The former president has trouble keeping his lawyers. Um, Trusty had with, withdrawn right after you interviewed him, Caitlin. Uh, in the twelve hours later, classified documents because of me, but in the classified documents case, um, because he was on talking about the indictment, and then the indictment turned out to be much different um, than what he had described on our air. So uh, it is a difficult circumstance for the former president that he can't keep his lawyers. Uh, who knows whether we'll learn the actual reasons, you know, what actually was the specific reason. I find it unusual for someone to go this far with a client and then right after they're indicted, withdraw from the criminal case. And then for whatever reason, then that probably, I would guess, yeah. led to his not being able to have a functional relationship with his client in the civil case. And it's just remarkable to see where we are because Todd Blanche, who is now the top attorney on his team, Team. He hasn't dealt with this case at all. He's only been on Trump's legal team for about two months. We'll see if he adds a third attorney. Thank you both for being here to talk about the implications here and what this looks like going forward. Thanks, Thanks Caitlin.